Hi, so. Deborah, as the founder of the uh, Energy Policy Forum, um, I know you've been involved in uh, you know, protesting the hydrofracking issue, and I thought you could uh, share with me some perspective on how this is really a bubble in, in terms of the fact there really will be the jobs that will be created, there will be this huge boom to the economy in upstate New York, and the fact that this is a huge environmental disaster just waiting to happen. I, uh, I have done work on all the major shale plays in the U.S., and what I've found across the board is that jobs have been overstated, taxes and revenues have been overstated, reserves have been overstated, and economic stability has been overstated in every case. Um, so it's, it's difficult to see, you know, if you take the Department of Energy's uh, new estimates for the Marcellus, they now are saying that all the reserves in the Marcellus will only provide a mere six years' worth of gas at current consumption rates. Well, is it worth it, you know, to, right. to damage the countryside for six years' worth of gas? Right. Well, you know, I don't believe it is worth it. That's why I introduced the, the legislation right. to ban hydrofracking in New York State. So what, what is the process? They, they drill a well. It takes about three months to drill a well. And then how long will that well last before they just move on to the next one? Interestingly enough, in some cases, they don't even drill a well. Um, a lot of this has been a land grab and um, a flipping of land, and they've made quite a bit of money just mm -hmm. doing that. Uh, I've, ca I've called it drilling for dollars in the capital markets. They took money from the capital markets, leased up the land, and then flipped it and made quite a lot of money. But when they do go in and drill, um, typically what we're finding, if you take the Barnett, which is where I live, um, we were told that the average well life should be 30 to 40 years. In fact, according to production history that the operators have filed with the Texas Railroad Commission, it's ended up being about seven. The wells are typically 85% played out by year five. Wow. So it's very short lived. Right. And how many, you know, originally when I was first involved in this, I heard the, the figure of 3,000 wells. Now that I'm hearing the figure of like 9,000 wells, what's been your experience when they come into a state like, like New York? How many wells that will actually drill? You know, by the very nature of the way you have to frack these wells, there's a very high density of wells. Um, and they, industry insiders will be very frank with you and tell you. Uh, I was in a conversation or had an email exchange with Dr. John Lee, who was the architect for the SEC's rule change for oil and gas, and he was very frank and told me that um, shale plays are what they call statistical plays. Uh, typically, 20% of the wells will carry the play, and 80% can be, in his own words, easily uneconomic. Mm -hmm. Well, that raises questions for me as to whether it's the highest and best use for the land. If the wells are short-lived and 80% of the land that you're consuming uh, for pad sites is going to, you know, produce an uneconomic well, is that really the highest and best use for the land? And of I course, then you have the problem of contamination. That's right. And then the land is, is and forever no ruined. reclamation, that's right. right. Um, no what, what has been your, your experience when, when you, because obviously to drill a well, we're now talking about natural areas upstate where sometimes they have to build the roads right. to get to where they want to drill. And now the trucking back and forth, right. chemicals and the, you know, only 50% of the wastewater is brought back from the well, so the wastewater is trucked back and forth. What has been the environmental impact in that respect? Well, you know, um, it, it can be immense. Uh, roads have certainly been torn up. Municipalities are finding throughout the country where gas drilling has come that their, their costs have increased um, simply because they're having to fix roads primarily. Um, they've had problems with earthquakes, obviously, near injection wells uh, all over the country. All Actually, that's even gone global now. Um, so. It, it, it's a real problem. Um, and you know, each one, this industry is exempt from the CERCLA Act, but each one of these pad sites, if they weren't exempt, it had, has the potential to be a super fun site. Right. Every single pad right. site. And you bring up an interesting point about the earthquakes, which is something we're only beginning to investigate right. when it comes to hydrofracking, because of the fact that they're shattering the shale. Right. And we do have major and minor faults in New York State, and we've been thankfully lucky that we have not had major earthquakes. But this will increase the potential to have a major disaster. And of course, we're not prepared for the earthquakes in New York State. Right, and you know, interestingly enough, the industry has denied, denied, denied uh, about the earthquakes in this country. However, they had earthquakes, uh, they shut down drilling in the UK recently, uh, shale gas drilling, and um, the UK government asked the company Quadria uh, Resources to give them a report, and Quadria um, admitted that it was the hydrofracking that had caused the earthquakes. Yeah. Now, I've been going, um, talking to every place that I could go, every civic association, every New York State resident, uh, about the fact that we have to stop hydrofracking happening. In, in one final thought, what would you say if you could speak to New York State residents 
about the dangers of hydrofracking? What would be that one thought that you could leave them with? I just, I mean, why do it for six years worth of gas? Why ruin what you got here? It, it's, it's astonishingly beautiful. Upstate New York is really beautiful. And um, why ruin it? Why take the chance? For six years worth of gas, it's just not worth it. Thank you, Deborah Rogers, uh, founder of the public, the Energy Policy Forum. Thank you so much.